to the John Doe Radio Show. I am your host, John Doe, chilling in the mile high. Thank you very much for hanging out with us. It is a uh, fantastic day inside the mile high. Let me uh, check my levels here again because we have some changed levels. Check one, two, three, four. Microphone got gotcha you right there. That is. We love it. We love it. It's the John Doe Radio Show. We live mile high from 5 o'clock till whenever the heck we decide to go. It's going to be from 5 to 7 probably once we get everything down and rolling and kicking and blasting and all that good shiz. So uh, big, big ups to everybody. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for joining us at this brand new hour. 7 o'clock uh, East, Eastern time. Totally just brain farted like no other. Six o'clock, no, four o'clock Pacific, right? Yeah, they're an hour behind. Come and join us for your 420 hour if you're down there in the uh, Pacific time frame. Really dig you guys, dig everybody that hangs out with the John Doe Radio Show. I am in an absolutely fantastic uh, mood today. I'm sure that you all have seen, and by the way, I may have completely, completely dropped the ball again with our guest this week. I could have sworn, I could have sworn for the life of me that I did let Sean and the homies over at CPM know that things were going to switch to 5 o'clock. So I hope that they roll in here. They may not, though, and I may have screwed up. So I do apologize, and we'll figure out. We'll read some news and get on some stuff and all that. All that good jazz. And, and uh, yeah, so um, anyway, um, make sure you guys check those guys out. They're the awesome good people. The place that they got is just amazing. They went and picked up the, um, the, the awesome extracts from Top Shelf and have gone with those guys. So I highly, highly, highly suggest that you get down with these good people, all right? They got two spots, two fantastic locations. I keep talking. The more and more I talk about it, I feel more worse. I hope I I I, uh, contacted with them, and then maybe they're just stuck in traffic or something. I don't know. Either way, make sure you check them out. They got two locations, one in Louisville and one in Lakewood. Make sure you check out the one in Louisville. That number, 303-665-5500. 96 303 665 5596 and in Lakewood 303 232 3620. Lakewood 232 3620. Uh, the one in Lakewood is at 1585 Quail Street, number 13B, and in Louisville at 1116 7 West Dillon Road on the southwest corner of West Dillon and McCaslin. Holler at them. Therapeutic massage, lymphatic massage, hot stone massage, just a few. Also with Chinese medicine to add to your therapies and what could possibly help you out. Being a cannabis patient and just adding to your repertoire of tools that you need to uh, happen and, 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 and be taken care of and, and everything just to be straight in your life. I think... Sorry, I, fig- I got to... Cl- I'm really, I'm trying not to be distracted here. I'm going to close out TweetDeck because NASCAR season has started again. So I'm a little bit TweetDeck. My my TweetDeck has a lot of NASCAR fools on it. And I really like NASCAR. And I ain't afraid to admit it. I'm sorry. I don't care. Sundays I sit there on the couch and I zone out and get baked and listen and watch those guys go round and round in circles and it shuts off my brain so what so i'll try and shut that off i got a little distracted there by uh, something kyle bush had posted so anyway getting back to cpm and those good people thank you uh cpm for being such awesome people we really appreciate you you guys are fantastic uh tonight uh hopefully at some point in time i'm not quite sure if we'll be able to get him uh, we'll see what happens, what time he gets back in here. But I would like to have our man Warren Edson join us at some point in time, to, uh, some point in time tonight, because he has been following all day the situation with the DUI bill hearing in Colorado that's been happening today. The uh, driving while under the influence, uh, driving DUI, driving under impaired. Dri- I don't know. I'm like so off today that like, I don't even know. 
That's why we got people like Warren Eds and some great people coming here and talk with you about it. But there's, uh, unfortunately, with all the business stuff that I've been having to take care of, I've been, I ain't gonna lie, I've, I've fallen back a little bit behind with news and stuff. And luckily enough, we have, you know, people like Steve Elliott and, you know, William Breeze when he comes in and other people, Warren Edson, that keep us up on these news and things. But he's been following that DUID bill hearing that's been going on in Colorado all day today. Some crazy things just been said in that. Um, uh, so, this is just hearsay. I don't know. I didn't hear it off the top of my head. But I... Uh, let me just... Let me just start by saying right off the bat with what I'm about to say with I want to create no problems with nobody. I'm at a point in my life to where I want to I'm I'm a love everybody. I want to I'm I'm, I want to make amends. I want to do whatever. But I also at a point where I'm also know that we have a responsibility at John Doe Radio to keep the show accurate and informative. Marijuana reform, news and entertainment. What we started from the second we started to make you feel comfortable as patients and. A five nanogram DUI limit for patients, for anybody, is not scientifically proper. It's not kosher. It's not okay. It's, it's, it will harm people. It will put people that, not, that don't smoke marijuana, that, that police think possibly, and I can't believe we're even talking about this again. You can go back months ago, and it's the same damn thing I'm repeat, repeating again on the John Doe Radio Show. It's going to harm people not only, and this time it's a little bit scarier because it involves not only more than just uh, marijuana, it involves other drugs involved with it too. So it's like, you know, the cop comes in and hopefully Warren makes it in time. I think maybe if we if we can last another hour, he may be back by uh, the 6.30 time, which is another, uh, about an hour from now. Um, but, you know, people that are pulled over and maybe that cop looks in your eyes and thinks... Say it's like two, three o'clock in the morning. You're just getting off of work, and say you work in the industry, which has happened with us before. Like you work in the industry, you smell like greens. You're a grower. You trim all day. Maybe that's just what you smell like, and that cop doesn't know the difference between raw marijuana and smoked marijuana. Maybe he's a new cop. Maybe whatever. Uh, there's just a situation that can come from that, that. That like he's got too much power. That five nanogram limit, obviously, if you're a patient, you work in the industry, you whatever, you've smoked, you're not going to pass a five nanogram limit. We've already, It's already proved that with William Breeze, you know, he didn't smoke for 13 hours. William Breeze with Westward.com, you know, went in, did some Alan Shackelford study type stuff. And there's more study that can be done. And I think it'll come back to be the same where after like 12, 13 hours of him not smoking, he's still at that 13 nanogram limit after being a patient for so long, you know. And then finishing up all this and, and going back to where originally I was coming from with this, the, the level, if they're going to put a level, which there needs to be no level, there's already laws to cover DUI in Colorado. There's already situations where this doesn't need to be an issue. But if we're going to talk about reality and we're going to talk about science and pull what needs to be pulled into this situation, it it's 23, 24, 25 nanograms per milliliter if you're high while driving. Right after you've just smoked, that's your level. I mean, that's your level. I was looking over to see if Phil, you know, if he was like maybe had heard something the same or anything, but he's just kind of chilling. That's cool. Sorry, man. Didn't mean to call you out there. Sit down anytime you want with that camera just pointed wherever and get on the mic, man. Phil. Okay. Do you remember DUID why it affects other people? Okay. Phil is going to start, whether he likes it or not, is going to start sitting down and having... I'm going to get up on the camera. Or I'm going to sit on the... Either way, Phil. Phil Cello. Phil and Phil, who we've introduced you on the John Doe Radio Show quite a bit here. Y'all should know him all by now if you're John Doe Radio Show buffs or whatever. If you go to johndoradio.com, the video that's up there, all responsible for him. I'm trying to find him a, a, a computer so that he don't have to spend nine hours a night or plus or whatever, you know, on his own computer, his own time doing his own thing without being paid basically nothing. Devoted a lot of his time. You know, I mean, it may seem like I know a lot about glass and we haven't even got to the why I'm so <laughs> happy and giddy today. But uh, this dude knows a lot about glass. 
and maybe not maybe not necessarily even like, like he, he knows people he knows artists he can pull names out of his yin yang like yesterday he messaged me and he's like dude we should really think about having this guy on the show and i'm like who and he's like dude <laughs> you know like probably wanted to reach to the screen and go like bart simpson ah, 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 ah. like you know straight homer simpson to bart simpson and that's when I thought, and I've been thinking it for a minute, for a couple days, even before that. I was like, I was even talking with Robin, with Robin with it for a minute of like, you know, I'm like, Phil knows this glass, man. He knows these artists. He's got a different perspective on things. I've asked some of the same, a lot of things. Maybe it's time to get a different perspective. So whether he not, he likes it or not, he's going to come and sit down on Tuesdays with us and have some input with these people and glass blowers. The people that maybe he, I asked him to maybe sit down, put a list of glass blowers on Tuesday uh, that we could get on the phone and we could start talking to, communicating with, like those people and stuff. Like those are the people that, okay, that's your list of people. So you get down, you sit here on the mic with me, you talk about what you know, because you've seen their stuff, you know their history, you know, like this, these crazy, what's the name of that, that dude who does that, that those, those, uh, those dishes that we were talking about a minute ago, T-Funk, that big J. Big J posted up some pictures of some T-Funk dishes, which is something I've like never seen before. Craziness. Like, I'm, I mean, maybe it's just that I haven't seen crazy. This is some brand new stuff, right? I mean, not a lot of like, right? I mean, maybe not from this artist, but for like its originality, right? I mean, have you seen anything like what that dude posted up before? Yes. Yes. See, that's why, period, end of story. That's why, what? Big J himself posts some pictures of some crazy stuff is what he's saying. Ren and Stimpy dudes on dishes and stuff. So that's what I'm saying, though. But those guys are, like, original. Like, there's not many more people making stuff like they were doing. Like, you can go to my Facebook page. I, I, I posted up the, uh, the what we're talking about. Uh, Tim Martin. And that's what I dig about glass blowers and stuff. But there's people you know that I don't know, and there's probably a lot more. I'm finding out more and more. And this is my ego busting up a little bit here. That you need to sit down with us and talk with us about these people. You can't be high. I'm not going to allow you to be here and de and devoid our audience of the knowledge and the names that you have to throw down, Okay. And, I, and the JDR Army ain't going to let you do it either. You getting called out right now, homie. Hold on. Let me flip on all the mics. Go. I, I don't know anything, man. I just appreciate it. Shut up. Appreciate you don't know anything. It, so. What don't you know? I, I don't know much you, of anything. I just kind of like... You don't know all these glassblowers' names? You don't know I all these... The you don't know the Filicello? Like when I point out, like I don't... Half the time I got to go... I got to go back and listen to the rest of the Glass Tuesdays because... If anybody doesn't know, uh, I start tomorrow as an apprentice with Swagger Glass. Uh, amazing. I'm blown away. It's one of the biggest things that has ever come along in my life that I'm like, oh, my God. Like, wow. I mean, I'm not, I, I don't mean to sound like nothing. I probably already made Donk last night and Sean and everybody feeling a little uncomfortable about like how like like i'm like oh thank you thank you thank you like just i never like i don't know if i can do this i straight up told him i'm like i'm nervous like i'm nervous like i sit here and i see things christina sasser brought in that stuff mike fro one of my favorite artists they bring it's like dude but it's like it takes time and like everybody keeps telling me you couldn't learn from the bet from better people in that world but but you're telling me You're gonna be sitting down on Tuesdays, man. Now, I don't care if you don't. You say you don't know nothing. You know, you know more names than I do. That's just appreciating their art, though, man. Like. But you're here for Tuesdays. Yeah. Like you yeah. came in for Glass Tuesdays, and then it was like all of a sudden you're here every day. Yeah. So, why can't we expand more on Glass Tuesdays? And then when they get their shop at Swagger, we go down there and we bring the camera, and then maybe some other stuff that you talk about. And, you know. <laughs> you know? Yep. For real. It's fun. Yeah. I mean, it's been a blown away moment for me for the past uh, 24, 48 hours. I went down and uh, hung out last night. Um, went down and uh, 
hung out with Dan from uh, Top Shelf Extracts. Which, by the way, 855-710-EARL if you'd like to have Top Shelf Extracts added to your repertoire. By the way, tonight, too, right after the John Doe Radio Show, um, I know I keep jumping around to everything. I'll get back to the whole DUID thing in here in a second. Tonight, after the John Doe Radio Show, starting at 7 o'clock Mountain Time on iCannabisRadio.com will be the iCannabis Radio Show. Uh, with Amy Diulo and uh, Warren Edson's a part of that, and Georgia Edson also. So, and I'm not quite sure exactly who they have on tonight. I haven't been able to pay attention online too much today, but uh, stick around for that, and I'll post up the link and head over to that and hang out with those guys. Um, so, I just wanted to push that forward. Um, where the fuck was I going with all the other stuff? Oh, just period, dude. Like, I can't have you hiding your these names and stuff. All right, so Tuesdays. Progression, man. Progression, communication, education, getting this stuff out to people in Iowa that don't know a damn thing about anything. And maybe they do know a damn thing about anything, but maybe there's someone in Iowa or Florida or whatever, man. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot, no matter what we do. I don't care on John Doe Radio. I'll cut the business, the nuts off this business before this show, before this show stops any day of the week. It's all about education. It's all about you feeling important. You, the patient. You, you, the user. And I hate saying user because that's like not even a right word. You, the enjoyer of cannabis, of this, of this medicinal herb, this, this magical herb. It's all to make you feel comfortable, all right? And I love the business side of it because it's allowed me to pay the bills. It's allowed me to do what I want to do, you know, for the most part. Heading back to the GUI do bill, though. I got no bed, be- bed behind me. It feels weird. I feel like I got to throw a bed behind me. Fark it. I don't care. Because this is so important for you guys to listen to and pay attention to, the DUI do bills are not only going to affect people like us that use cannabis. The 13 nanogram thing that I said, you know, 13 hours after dude had smoked, he still tested positive. Say that you get pulled over and you work at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. You don't even work in the industry. You're getting off as a waiter or waitress or whatever it does. You're a metal worker. You're, you, do, you do hard labor. Maybe you just got off a 12-hour shift. You know, you do four, five, 12-hour shifts a week. You're ready to, like, fall over and die. But you're still cool to drive home, you know? You're still fine. That cop pulls you over, and he thinks. He don't even smell marijuana. He, maybe, maybe, maybe all of a sudden in his brain, some weird trigger from, like, before five years ago where he like did a bust in a car all of a sudden some weird smell like you know you get those weird smells sometimes phil where it's like that's some weed but it's not weed maybe he gets that smell and he looks in your eyes and he don't believe you that you're not high you're arrested right there period he can't take that cop unless he's a csp officer and an emt can't take your blood right there and either way you're going to get a dui you're going to get arrested and taken to jail so you're either going to get to, you're going to get arrested, taken to jail, have your blood drawn, or most likely one of anything, there's going to be a ambulance that comes to show up to take your blood, or you're going to be taken to the hospital to take your blood. And who knows? Maybe maybe the hospital charges you nine hundred dollars for that emergency room visit, all because this cop thinks that you're high because you've just worked your ass off all day. Like I'm not even trying to think sometimes about me and Phil, and the people with cancer, the people with AIDS. I'm thinking about the general public in this situation. It's dangerous. It's a slippery slope. We already have situations out there, and that's why I was so kind of hard last week about the bill up in, up in Washington, you know, and the situation there, and normal supporting that. And if I'm wrong about this, uh, call me out on it, man, because I don't want to be wrong with this about it, you know? I don't think it belongs anywhere near what we're trying to do in, in, in this and by the way, please, if everybody could, while you're in the chat room, if you, uh, if you get a chance, you feel comfortable with it, johndoradio.com slash live, Monday through Friday, starts at 5 o'clock. Uh, I'd really like just to uh, continue to build up that chat room again. I know that when we ch- change over times that some people kind of fall off and we, lo- we lose some people. Um, I, I'm not trying to be harsh against normal. I'm not. I know, nor- I know normal has... Man, I just got to be really touchy because I don't, I don't want to make anybody mad. I'm not trying to be mad with anybody. I still have yet to receive a letter back from certain people explaining why exactly we couldn't have just talked things out and why exactly we just had to get chopped. 
It's okay. It's done. It's past. I'm trying to get over the situation. But the problem that I have is like why earlier I heard Representative King here in Colorado, which proposed this bill, the five nanogram, and brings up this whole situation. Why is he saying normal supports this? Why is up in Washington normal supporting this non-scientific means? You know, like why? Why? I mean, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to be call him out. I'm not trying to do anything. But like, why? There's no science behind it. And if it's just to move it through and just to get ahead, there's some things that we can bend at the knees at. But the, the, but just like I explained before, the harm to the general public is not worth the bending the knees at this time. Like, let's get a better bill in there. Let's wait another year. Let's knock that bill out. Let's get people in there that have science and have that understanding. Do some more studies. Get people in there to sit down and say, look, there is no science on this. There's no science on this. And yeah, people shouldn't be driving impaired. And that's where it comes down to it, is people just don't care. They, they don't want people driving impaired. Well, you know what? There's an impairment level for alcohol. So, so there's going to be maybe an impairment level for marijuana. So why, if we're going to do it, why can't we do it the right way and do it the smart, proper way, get science into this situation, and do what's the means that, that need to be the means to be brought out to the end? To, to help everybody and make sure that people are taken care of. Still, the bottom line is you get a DUID bill and s still people are arrested, taken away. You know, the old bill allowed for up to like 20 days of you being in jail if you couldn't bail out, which you should be able to bail out because it's two, three, four, five hundred dollars $500 a bail bondsman here in Colorado, especially under a THC DUI, a dr drunk dri driving or under DUID bill is going to get you out. You know, because they know it's stupid. They know it's crazy. But I know I got I know I got people in here in the chat and I know I got people from both sides and and we've we've grown a lot from normal and we've got people that love both sides and I don't want to draw a line between either one, but it's like it's like I'm sort of frustrated. I really am. Because there's no science behind it. And that's all I'm gonna say about it. We'll move on. We'll get on to some commercials here and stuff, but if it's true what I just heard about Representative King saying that he's even got normal behind this five nanogram limit, it's disappointing. It's disappointing, normal, okay? Because it's not, it's, and even trying to just, in the fact of moving things forward, it's, it's too, like, that's not bending at the knees, that's us getting on our knees, and I'm sorry if that comes off as the wrong way and offensive. I'm not trying to be offensive. I'm not. I'm just, I'm trying to protect you. I'm trying to protect everybody else around us. Because there are people that want to take everything, everything that we have away from us still. And we can't forget that. The five nanogram limit is a joke. It basically means zero. Like, if you're a pa patient, you're not going to be able to smoke ever. Period, end of story, and drive. And by the way, if you ever do get pulled over, you ever have a cop that is, has a situation to where you are being harassed or whatever because of marijuana or whatever, especially here in Colorado with the rules, like they're going to try and get you with a DUI here in Colorado if they smell marijuana. They're, they're probably, they're going to try and get you with a DUI. My suggestion, you do not tell them that you've smoked marijuana within the last 30 days, that you're not sure why it smokes marijuana in the car, why it smells like marijuana in the car, that maybe it smells like marijuana in the car because you, 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 you are a patient. If, the, if, if, if he would like, do not offer up to show anything, like except for maybe a card. Don't offer to show your greens. If they ask to see your greens and you have your card and you're fully legal, try and be as compliant as possible. But at the same time, do not admit to having smoked two, three hours earlier, a day earlier, two days earlier, three days earlier. Do not admit to that, okay? You don't have to. And the only thing that's going to do is it's going to get you in trouble, okay? I've been through it before. I not I haven't been through that trouble through that before, but I've been through a stop to where the cop has been like that. And I've I'm just telling you. And that's what Warren Edson would probably say to you too. This is I I mean I sit in the lawyer's office every day. Do not allow these people to run you over. Do not allow these people, and I mean everybody, the drug warriors, the police or whatever, to take control of your lives, to take away from you your medicine, your freedom, your just plain and simple peace of mind, okay? Take control of yourself. 
like have have a power in yourself and in by doing that educate yourself know what's legal what's not legal when that cop gives you a warning and says you're good to go you're good to go you don't have to stay any longer if a cop comes to your car says okay i'm going to give you a warning blah 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 but i still want to search your car say no no because under supreme court rules it's been ruled that after that cop says that you that you have a warning business is done with you guys you're done you legally can leave the scene so I just want, I don't know, I maybe got a little bit more serious and whatever, but um, just want to make sure that you guys understand that these, uh, these things are affecting a lot of people. They're going to keep coming up and up and up and up and up and up. And I'm afraid that with everything that I've heard today, Warren kind of being, it seems like maybe as he left, he was a little frustrated with the things that were being, um, being said and put over. Um, it sucks that we might end up with this bill. Because it seems like no matter what, these people are just not going to quit. But the point with all this being, we'll get some commercials here and then we'll get some news. Because it doesn't look like the the good peeps from CPM are going to be here today. That's I'll take 100% blame for that. That is my fault. Uh, lack in communication. Lack of just getting my shiz together lately. Um, what was I talking about? The UID bill. Um... Anyway, just be careful, okay? Let's try and protect ourselves. That's the bottom line. Let's get some commercials here. All of a sudden, got the mad munchies too, yo. I had that TV dinner like less than an hour ago, and I'm hungry. But I ain't ate for like, I ain't gonna lie, man. Bills are tough right now. And, and bills are tough, Phil? Bills are t- I'm sorry for throwing out your shit, dude. I don't mean to throw out your shit. I'm sorry, I really do. I shouldn't have thrown that out there. Don't hate me for that. It's tough for everybody, man. So uh, maybe that's just it. I just need to, I need to fill up I need to fill up the stomach a little bit more. Now we need to just go to some commercials so we can actually pay some bills and stuff. Also, big what up to our homies down at Platte Valley, man. Ride or die with Platte Valley and CPM, same people, man. All these people that have helped us out in the John Doe Radio Show. There'll be a commercial coming up here from Platte Valley. Um, it needs to be updated a little bit because there's some different specials at the end that have changed. But they still got the, 15, the $15 Wax Wednesdays. Go down there and tell them the John Doe Radio Show sent you, all right? David, uh, Emmanuel, all, all the homies down there, I tell you right now, dude, they are good, good, good people. All right? Just good people. And you want to go where there's good people. So... Uh, I want to get that out of the way. Say thank you to those guys. Huge, huge, huge thank you to those guys for being supporters of the John Doe Radio Show. Hoping to to uh, form a long term relationship with them. They've got uh, Too Short, who is going to be inside their dispensary on 420, uh, doing an in store appearance. And people asking like, why? Like a few questions on their thing, like this doesn't seem medical at all or whatever. And it's like, Phil, are you a medical patient? Am I a medical patient? Do you like Too Short? I like Too Short. Not necessarily my favorite artist in the world, whatever. But he's his favorite. You know what? There's people that are not... You know what? You ain't got to be dying and sick and out and cancer patient and AIDS to be using this as a positive thing and whatever. And I realize that there's an image we need to protect out there too. But there's also that thing of like going back, give respect to Russ Belleville here because this is the one where he came from. Why we got to be downstairs in the basement chained up against the radiator? Why we got to use our medicine chained against the radiator, you know? So have fun. Enjoy. If you like Too Short, you're in town. Make sure you head down to Platte Valley. I think that's on 420. And I think on 420, there's going to be some big, huge announcements coming up for on the recreational side of things. Um, the big 420 event that goes in, in Colorado, you all know that. It's huge, 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 man. It's the biggest event that goes on in the entire nation. Uh, both Denver and Boulder, you combine them both, shh, ain't nobody touching us. Like, ter- ain't nobody touching us. You can't argue 420. Maybe like Boston Freedom Rally, all the, you know, the big Seattle Ham Fest and stuff. All right, fine, fine, fine. Obviously, we're blown away. But on 420, that's why they call us to Mile High State, man. You, <laughs> if you haven't seen 420 in Colorado, you got to go search online. Kim Sidwell 420 and look through her pictures, all right, online of what she's got and the cloud. Have you, you, you seen that picture of the cloud that one year? I think it was like 2009, the cloud at 420 when it just like hit. It's just like like literally the clouds had like settled on top of everybody. It's just amazing. And it's a freeing experience. 
unfortunately, you know, there's some sometimes I'm gonna I'm gonna call them out. The jigahoes, <laughs> the jigalos causing problems. Only because they're wearing their juggalo shirts, you know. I mean, that's the only problem. Is there's some hooligans down there that cause some problems sometimes. But all in all, it's it's just an amazing, uh, it's, it's it's an amazing event, amazing get together for freedom. All right. So anyway, uh, go to our uh, Facebook page, the John Doe Radio Show on Facebook. Uh, search for us. Also, Phil is on Facebook. His Facebook name is Earl Ripper. You got to change that to uh, Phil Filicello or something like that. We got to do some. Maybe if we get things moved forward, maybe when that time comes, we, we change that name. Got asked last night, like, what's your glass blowing name going to be? John Doe, motherfucker. <laughs> the JD. The JD. <sighs> anyway, um, make sure you check out uh, Earl, Rip- Earl Ripper. He's tagged up all over my Facebook. Uh, I just posted up this uh, ridiculous marble. This Rasta Tings uh, Batundo mar- Marble, two inches, just made. Uh, who did I say it was made from? Carver Glass? I think it might be a Carver Glass piece. It's uh, from Andrew Brown Studios. Um, I just love glass. Andrew Brown Studios is Carver. See? That's why you need to be sitting here on Glass Tuesdays. Do you understand? Do you get it now? The JDR Army is going to be everybody listening to this episode. Get to his Facebook page, Earl Ripper, E-R-R-L, Ripper, from Denver, Colorado. Right now, his picture is the Oilers. And you get on there and tell him that Class Tuesday, don't threaten him or nothing. Because then he'll come out and punk you. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Uh, I have too much fun on the show. I really do. It's been fun just getting away from everything and coming to sit down with you guys and just BS and uh, it's been cool. So, um, Also, make sure you check us out, uh, my Facebook page, my first personal Facebook page. Um, I've pretty much just said the hell with it, and uh, I don't really give a crap of how much I bitch or moan on it or whatever. If this is JDR is JDR. John o Radio is me. John o Radio is Phil. John o Radio is everybody that is a piece of this. You know, it's reality TV. It's an educational. It's an accurate and informative marijuana news and entertainment are we a television show now? I guess we kind of are. Radio te- radio, and television show now. Phil, you made us into a TV ch- show. It's the last thing I ever wanted to be. What the fuck, man? Why the hell you got to... Why, why? No, I'm kidding. It's the listeners that wanted it, man. It's the people that demand it. They want to watch. They want to watch good stuff. Especially on Glass Tuesdays. Like, like, it'd be stupid to not have like someone sitting here filming stuff for Glass Tuesdays. Plus, with that camera, that fo- that ridiculous camera that Jason Love's got, like, dude, if he can get in here and like you can film on yours, he can do little different angles. We can double angle it up, start being like the like like Dan Patrick show up in here. That fool's crazy. You listen to sports talk radio, don't you, Dan Patrick? Yeah, he's crazy. He's not on ESPN anymore. He hasn't been on ESPN for a while too, is he? Keith Olbermann should have stuck with ESPN too. Is Chris Berman still on ESPN? Back, 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 gone. I remember a game back in the day where it was like that, and I was like, I loved hitting a home run because I was like, Chris Berman. <laughs> Dude, you wonder where all my announcing and stuff. Welcome to the John Doe Radio Show, or you're listening to iCannabis Radio on iCannabisRadio.com. Like, you know what? You wonder where all that shit came from? It's from those mofos on like ESPN, from Keith Olbermann, even though I don't like him at all right now. I, can't stand listening to the guy really at all. I probably lost a couple of listeners because of that, but oh well. Talking heads are talking heads. Fark them all, every single last one of them, except for the Judge Napolitano. That guy knows what's up. And too bad Fox News fired him and he's just on now like every other day or whatever and a guest. <laughs> I just keep thinking about how weird I get. Like, maybe not weird is the thing, but just off the, you know, off the wall or whatever. I go back and I listen to the show and I'm like pissed that I didn't put a bed underneath me while I'm listening. You know, because I like, I want to listen and I like listening to a bed and I'm like, fuck it, man. Damn it. Why didn't you put a bed under this? Like, no offense to y'all listeners, but 
just for my own purposes. <laughs> I love every single last one of you. Y'all, seriously, man, this has become my life. Um, if this whole glass blowing thing works out, it could change everything. It could change everything. It's uh, something I've wanted to do for a long time. I didn't think that I would ever be able to do and to be offered it. Uh, big, by the way, uh, and we'll get to see the commercial here. I'll push fire on the damn commercial here in a second, all right? But I got to give mad, 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 mad big shout outs to Donk Sean. Everybody that's led me to this point in time to be even able to get... There are thousands of people that want this job. Thousands of people that want this job. And to be, like, literally, like, to be messaged and, like, offered the apprenticeship and said to be like, yo, we see your love. We see what you can do to, like, to have the talks that we talk, man. I don't want to sit here and blast too much of what we talked about. Like, because, you know, I don't, like, I don't know what people are private with and not... I'm like open with everything. Every single damn thing in my life I'm open with about. But like we sit down and we talk, man. I mean, this that this opportunity is huge. This is one of the biggest opportunities that I've ever had in my entire life. I've never been nervous about too many opportunities in my life. I've never been too nervous about anything, man. I used to do, you know, stage acting back in, back in uh, school and stuff. And it was like, you'd be nervous right before you go on stage. And right when it's like, bam, go on stage. Or even the John Doe radio show. There's days where I'll be... Nervous as hell before I get on the show, man. We have a big guest. You know, we got we sat down, we stopped, we talked with Governor Gary Johnson twice. You don't think I'm nervous? Sitting down about ready to talk with a two time governor? You know? I even though I've done this before, work for the Associated Press, I still get nervous. But like to sit here and be like to have that offer, to to have something put in front of you that's like could change your entire life. Like, literally change your entire life at a time where it's like uh, you're thinking that you got to change your entire, that something's got to change here. I mean, to be, I mean, to be honest with you guys, we're getting pretty close here to the Chondo Radio Show to it becoming a once a week thing and me me going back in groceries. <laughs> like, not even kidding you, like, and, and figuring out however we could. And I know I'm, I know I'm blabbering and getting on with stuff, but, uh, Big ups to everybody that's made this a possibility, you know. We love Nate Myers. We love Christina Sasser, who just came on the show, you know, a couple, a couple weeks ago. You know, Steve Bates. We love Steve. He's in town. Thank you, Steve and Klazina, for inviting me to you guys' get-together. Maybe I shouldn't have thrown that up. hope that wasn't something prior. Anyway, thank you to um, uh, Joel Halen. Uh, Tricky will be here on Tuesday. Thank you to Matt Hatter Smoke Shop. Thank you to everybody that's made this up, lead up to the possibility for this to happen. I'm gonna make this happen, and they made a point to to, to say, look, we 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 love working with people. We love we love uh, you know training people and stuff. So, without getting on to any more, because I feel like I'm sort of like pissing everybody off here by like just sitting here like just going off and talking shiz or whatever. Uh. This is huge. Like, I can't even tell you how big it is and how much it means to me and how fucking nervous I am. But we'll get it. We'll get it, and uh, we'll do it right. And who knows, man. I'm, never, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. I'm not going to get ahead of myself. I'm going to sit down, shut up, and learn. That's all I'm going to do. So big ups to Swagger Glass. Make sure you guys check them out on, on Facebook and, uh, and, and, and holler at them, man. And make sure you check out the new stuff coming from them, man. I telling you what, I tell you what, if you're looking for a piece, you're looking to spend some money, and you want to get some, you go to Mad Hatter Glass, you holler at Mad Hatter Glass, you tell them that you want the link. All right? That's all I got to say about that. I was farking around with the link. You know how we had the link last Tuesday on the show? And it was like that deep, like Darth Vader. I kept calling it the Vader last night in front of uh, <laughs> in front of Sean and stuff. And I like kept feeling bad because it's like named after his dog, and his dog's right there. And... He he didn't care, but like I straight was messing around with the 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 hit of this over like some uh, production pieces, like trying to get it to actually sound like Darth Vader, and it does. <laughs> so good, like, like straight up, dude. Like it's sick. Like I can't believe I can't believe it, man. And uh, the simple fact that I'm as loyal as mofo as they come. And about as honest as a mofo as they come, despite of what you heard, despite of whatever's been said about me, I feel like I am. Uh, I can't wait to spend just an incredible amount of time with these people. 
they're going to get sick of me. Like, you guys are already sick of me. Everybody's probably telling me you're going to be messing with me. Just shut up when you're there with them and learn. <laughs> you know? First person I, like, hollered at last night was my my pops. It's like, it's like, hey, pops. Different than, different, something different than JDR right now. Not that the JDR, anyway. So, John, our radio show, we do it live in the mile high. I don't want to forget about anybody else who's gotten us to this point. So, big ups. Sit down, dude. Get some water. We get you on the mic. Get talking about some news and stuff when you come back in here. But big thanks to a cut above. Um, they're big fan of ours. Uh, Compassionate Pain Management. Big ups to those guys. Two locations: Louisville and Lakewood. Big huge mad ups to Mad Hatter Smoke Shop and the homies down there. Paul, they're gonna be here on Tuesday with Tricky, doing good times. I don't know what the hell we're gonna be talking about. Bastard's always trying to do something that farks with me. Seriously, it's become a game now for them to come in every day and figure something out to fark with one of us, right? Like, for real, every day. But we appreciate, we love it. <laughs> we don't appreciate that. We don't love that. But we appreciate them, we love them, we love the friendship. Rare Dankness Seeds, make sure you check them out, raredankness.com. Big thanks to those guys, Pam, Scott, Mark, all y'all rock. Mark, give me a holler when you... Maybe we can meet up and get my vape back sometime soon. <laughs> I know you've been going through some shiz. Big ups to Mark and uh, his pops that's been in the hospital. Uh, wishing the best for him. And everybody else that makes the John Doe Radio show possible, including Top Shelf Extracts. Um, I got to sitting down and chilling with Dan here for a couple days. And uh, he's a really cool guy. So 855-710-ERRL. 855-710-ERRL. That's how you can get a hold of Top Shelf Extracts. One of the best extract companies here in Colorado that does wholesale. There's not a lot of companies that you can call up and say, hey, I need to get this in in my spot. Can you do this for me? And this dude will bust it out. I mean, I only know of two, three that can do this. So, And Top Shelf does it. Plus, he's uh, uh, I sat down and chilled with him here a couple days. And uh, Dan's a really good guy. And I uh, appreciate appreciate him and his good words. Appreciate all y'all and your good words. So it's a John Arreda show. We do it live at the Mile High. If I forgot anybody, anybody feels like they've been left out, I know I'm forgetting somebody. I know I'm forgetting people. You know, we got Dude Grows, all the good people that have led us up to this point, you know, Derek, everybody, goddamn, shut the hell up, blah, 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 blah. I'm just trying to make sure that everybody gets the thanks. And we got time here to fill. And I thought we were going to have maybe CPM here today. That's not their fault. Everybody in the chat room keeps telling me it's my show. It is my show. But I want to make sure that you guys got a good, good product and it's not just me rambling. And then me just sitting here saying I'm just rambling. Then I get people on, on iTunes that go and post up like, it's all this dude does do is ramble. If I wouldn't say I just rambled, they wouldn't even be thinking it, you know? Yeah. They'd just be like, this is a radio show. This guy just likes to talk. <laughs> my problem. I explain too much. It's a JDR. John Doe Radio. Platte Valley Medical Marijuana Center in Denver has some of the most affordable prices anywhere. Don't believe us? Call them. 303-953-0295. That's 303-953-0295. Or just head down and visit them. Trust us. Located at 2301 7th Street, Unit B, across from the Denver Aquarium. Great people who care about a fine selection of meds and a wide variety of extracts from Top Shelf Extracts. With daily specials like Monday Madness with premium strain specific joints for only $1 when they're normally $3. Wax Wednesday with all wax for $15 a gram when normally $20 a gram. And during the NFL playoffs, Platte Valley is running a special on select ounces for just $125. Obviously. And select $15 eighths, not bottom. Obviously, that's still not valid. What I just said, $125 ounces and $15 select eighths, not bottom shelf strains either. Don't miss one of the busiest and most convenient dispensary locations in Denver, Platte Valley Medical Marijuana Center, located at 2301 7th Street, Unit B, 303-953-0295. And until January 15th, everyone gets patient prices at $25 eighths and $150 ounces. Platte Valley Medical Marijuana Center. 
Mad Hatter Smoke Shop has got your high-quality, American-made, unique pieces and some of the best scientific glass available anywhere. Artists and companies like Mike Fro, Cowboy, Zob, Royal, and D-Rock with some of the best products the Mile High State has to offer. Treehouse, Joel Halen, Worm, Tricky, and more. Mad Hatter Smoke Shop also carries Sheldon Black, one of the highest names in glass standards. Don't miss out on the Holy Water style collection either. Our friend John Waters offers his line of shirts, jackets, hats, and skateboards for men and women. Mad Hatter Smoke Shop for everything the JDR Army needs. Mention JDR or John Doe Radio and get 20% off. 20%! Visit MadHatterSmokeShop.com or email store at MadHatterSmokeShop.com for inquiries. Mad Hatter Smoke Shop, 6091 West Colfax Avenue in Denver, 303-953-7015. Store at MadHatterSmokeShop.com, 6091 West Colfax Avenue, Denver, Colorado, 303-953-7015. Trouble with the law? Or maybe you're looking to start a medical marijuana business? The law firm of Edson Maiton and Matz can help. Attorneys Warren Edson, Lauren Maiton, and Chris Matz offer a wide range of criminal defense-related assistance and cannabis business legal services. Call the team of legal professionals ready to help you or your business out today. 303-831-8188. That's 303-831-8188. Or check out the website warrenedson.com. That's warrenedson, E-D-S-O-N.com. John the Radio. Blue Talk. Solid. Solid. Ba-ba-ba. Ba 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 da 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 da. You're listening to the John Doe Radio Show, hanging out with us at our brand spanking new time, five o'clock Mountain Time in the Ohio High City. Thank you again for hanging out with us. And uh, sorry there if the levels were a little bit off. If you're listening live, it should fix it when we get into the production of everything and level it off. But I may have blasted the shiatsu out of your ears there. If not, oh well. Inside baseball. Yada, yada, yada. So, that uh, commercial that you just heard from Platte Valley. Again, in my redonkulous of being in a coma of whatever I've been in here in the past whatever couple of weeks, I ain't going to make no more excuses. Fark it. It is what it is. Things are what they are. If you go to Platte Valley... And you ask for one of those specials that are no longer valid and you drop the John Doe radio show. Hopefully they help you out and they hook you up with that special. But here's the deal. That not that that the football special and the other special isn't this. I farked up. Okay, I need to edit those out. And I told Phil that needs to be edited out. I forgot they were even in there. But still Platte Valley, man, right across the street from the Denver Aquarium. They got you hooked up. I bet if you tell them the John Doe Radio Show sent you, they take care of you, all right? Especially if you ask for David or Emmanuel. Ba-da-da. Ba-da-da. Da-da-da. 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 Ba-da-da. Da-da-da. 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 So what you been up to, Phil, here? Just out. chilling like a villain without a millin? Exactly. Hold on, I gotta get your mic. Put your headphones on. All right. Unless you're taking care of business or doing whatever you need to do. No, I was just trying to see what I had going on here. Sorry, I'm feeling a little under the weather today. That's that's what's going on. Phil does not feel good today. Yeah. Kay. Can I tell everybody what you told me before? What's that? When you came in, when you when you called me and you're like, told me you're like, you didn't feel good? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> that if somebody gets punched in the face today, it ain't your fault? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think I was that harsh. I no, think, no, you weren't that harsh. I think I said, if someone catches a random <laughs> F-bomb. <laughs> if someone, I was, and then I said, I hope it's not me. <laughs> Yeah. I don't mean to blast all your shiz <laughs> everywhere, dude, but you know me. You know the JDR. We we just talk. We just talk. Yeah. So anyway, sorry you're feeling under the weather today, man. We get you home. Oh, no. It's all good. It's cool. I just couldn't take standing there anymore. So, I, dude, I couldn't stand up as long as you stand up. I'm five, five minutes. I'm done. I'm a stander. I don't mind standing. 
Yeah. You're a stander. Yeah, I don't mind standing. I don't think I've ever heard that term of anything. You're a stander. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, if we're at somewhere, you know. You I, can stand I up? I, I think I'd rather stand up than sit down in some situations just because if if it hits the fan, I'm going to be the first out the door. Did I just see dabs here? What female is here that I just saw walk by? You called it correct, my friend. Dabs is here? Yes. Lauren Dabs layer up in this business. Must be going down tonight here. <laughs> you hear me banging on the mic there. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's going to be able to hear that. <laughs> it's the John Doe Radio Show. We do a live in my high. Check us out, johndoeradio.com. We love you guys. Thank you guys for hanging out with us. Thank you for all our sponsors for hanging out with us. Uh, news today. Colorado Marijuana Li- Initiative has qualified for the November ballot. Uh, sorry, I, I don't know if I mentioned this before. Probably should have been one of the first things that we got to here on the show. <laughs> But oh well, that's how we do it on the John Doe Radio Show. On Monday, the Colorado Secretary of State, Scott uh, Scott's office, on a certified initiative for the state's November general election ballot that would legalize. Come in and hang out. She's standing there looking at me like she's not allowed in here. You standing there looking at me like you're not allowed in here. You can come hang out. You got the dime bag with you, too. Dime bag from Silver Surfer Vaporizers. Anyway, we're talking about the Colorado legalization issue. If you want to talk, you can talk. If not, not, nah, whatever. Just come in and hang out with us. On, uh, until some, everybody else gets here. What do you got with you? Oh, you got, I thought you had some hot chocolate with, like, marshmallows on top of it. Real G's drink hot chocolate. That's what you told me the other day. <laughs> Why is that? I don't know. Something you made up, <laughs> real G's. Drink. I went to go get some coffee, and he like we passed the hot chocolate. And he's like, real G's drink hot chocolate, and I'm like, <laughs> you almost made me have to get some hot chocolate. Yeah, but it didn't have no caffeine in it, so it wasn't gonna work. <laughs> Focus, motherfucker. Focus. All right, uh, Scott Gessler certified the initiative for the state's November general election in Colorado's ballot that would legalize personal marijuana possession and allow regulated sales of marijuana to adults. By the way, if you ever see anything tagged up anywhere in the state of Colorado, or anywhere in the world, really, that says... No, really, anywhere in the world probably coming up here that says marijuana is safer than alcohol, this person sitting to the left of me that you can probably see on cam behind me, named named Lauren Dabbs Lair, probably did it. (laughs) So go after her. <laughs> she knows it. She giving me that look like she don't knows it. Whatever. Good times. Hey, thanks again for uh, helping me out the other night. Really appreciate that. Uh, Gessler announced that the campaign to regulate not like you guys think. She took me up to Scott's place. <laughs> you know there was oh, some there man. was some people thinking some craziness there. That was actually over my head till you said something. Yeah, but you know, I'm just trying to make sure that we kosher here. I'm looking at you. Yeah, I'm looking at you. No, I'm I don't know who I'm looking at. People are like, today he is. This five o'clock show is like, jump this. Like, what? Ha- what has happened with John Doe at five o'clock? It's a, it's a different time. It's a different show, man. It's a different feeling. It's a different rock, man. But it's not, in a way. Uh, Gessler announced the campaign to regulate marijuana like alcohol turned in more than the required number of valid signatures to qualify for the ballot. Ballot uh, Voters in Colorado will have the opportunity to vote on this measure November 6th. If passed, the initiative would allow adults 21 and older to possess and use limited amounts of marijuana. It would also establish a system of regulation to control and tax cannabis sales, much like the system that already exists for alcohol and direct the Colorado legislature to enact legislation governing the cultivation, processing, and sales of industrial hemp. That statement is true, but a little bit not true, too. The only thing not true about that statement... Sorry, Steve, I'm not saying that you're not... No, that statement is true. It's just a little bit deeper than that. The initiative allows... Basically, the initiative allows for legalization of, of a certain amount of marijuana. I think it's... 
two ounces, right? Certain amount yeah. of six six plants, and then it allows makes specific inroads for the state legislature to come in like they have with medical marijuana and regulate the system, which would happen right off the bat. I mean, period, end of story. If it gets passed, the feds may come in and bitch a fit and throw down like a mofo. Can you imagine the first state to legalize marijuana? What kind of battle they're going to have to deal with with the feds? Hopefully we get to see. That's the fist, man. That's that's that. No, that's the. I need a ching 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 ching. I need the. I need. We need the non-Q-tip army. We need this with the soldiers with the swords and standing next to us in the armor. No, no, fist ain't gonna do nothing when they got coming in through MP5s through your door. <laughs> People are gonna take me. I'm gonna end up with a cop knocking on my door later saying, "Did you just threaten the DEA?" No, I did not. No threat whatsoever. <laughs> Think I'm a threat in the DEA when they got MP5s and I got a machine gun point in my head, which has happened before. Eight of them. <laughs> What's up? Did you get a new thing? Dabs to keep kids extracting nugs. Where'd you get this at? Wait, hold on. I got a speaker for you. Go. Um, no, I just put that on your torch. That's your torch. You just put a sticker on my torch? Yes, I did. (laughs) But it's a cool sticker. It's a cool sticker. But this is Lauren Dabbs layer for you. (laughs) Just straight up come in, tag up your shiz, just like I said. My torch reps the good folks at Mad Hatter's. Yeah. Dabs to keep kids extract. Is there somebody somebody bumping something here? Is it just my headphones? No, they're listening to that. Oh, still over next they still door. listen yeah. to the, the hearing? Yeah. Okay, it's all mumble. But I'm, yeah. You never they got, know. They got it jamming, too. Yeah. You never know, because the last Monday it was like... <laughs> like next room. Oh, you can help yourself. I got to warn you, though. I'm a little under the weather, so if oh. you catch a cough that's not being choked... See, if any other, any, any other girl were to give you that look, you'd be like... Yo, what's up? <laughs> but you knew exactly what that look was. It was a dab look. It's dry too, just so you know it's a dry. Piece. Hold on here, let me hit mute. <laughs> oh my bad. Hold on, no. They got that bumping next door, man. It's loud. <laughs> Especially when I turn on that third mic in here. They're yeah, really into that hearing. Someone in there with a deep voice, be like Howard Stern. Dude, yeah, that hearing <laughs> must be going off. I hope. Oh. Let's hear what Howard Stern has. It's distracting me. I gotta turn. I gotta turn off your mic, Lauren. If you want to talk, just holler at me. That mic, that mic picks up a lot of low end. And I got the 80 hertz cut anyway, inside baseball. <sighs> People are like, what was that noise you just made? That sounded like some Star Wars Jawa. I don't know what it was. I tried some East Coast Did Alien. I shut off your mic? I shut off your mic. Still, oh, there, there we go. You got some what? I tried some East Coast Alien this weekend. Really? Yeah, some East Coast Alien Shatter. Um... From um, provided uh, by the good folks from Top Shelf, uh, purchased through the good folks at Platte Valley. It was which, awesome. Which you mean originally came from OG Genetics, probably? Uh, I would assume so. I don't know. That, that, I think that line came from OG Genetics. It was uh, it it was East Coast Alien. I don't know. It was bomb and shattered though. It was something delicious. Something delicious. Uh, last night. <laughs> Dude, I got two different swabs in here. I got an actual cleaner swab. Oh, sweet. Oh, by the way, you can go and pick up these uh, these concentrate bar, these concentrate bar things. They got a bunch of dabbers and cool stuff in them, and Mad Hatters too. I just saw they got alcohol swabs in here too. Nice. I kind of for the dirty dabbers. Well, we were looking for an alcohol swab earlier because you got that cold and we only had this, like, refreshing wet wipes, which I don't know if it's like a... There you go. I don't know. We still haven't made it halfway through this damn story. And we're at 6.05. I got to be here till 8.30 anyway, so... It's all good. As long as we end by 7 o'clock. Actually, we'll probably end the show here within the next uh, 20, 30 minutes. 
Um, if you guys have a question inside the chat room, by the way, we'll finish up with this story about the legalization. Get on to a few other news stories here. I don't know why I keep apologizing for blabbering on. This is what you get with the John Doe Radio Show. Um... Uh, never mind. If, uh, if passed the initiative would yada yada yada. We already talked about that. that supporters of uh, rational marijuana policies everywhere should congratulate the residents of Colorado for placing this initiative on the ballot, said Rob, Rob Campia, executive director of the MPP. Regulating marijuana like alcohol, and by the way, with saying that, I called out Rob Campia this weekend as one of the people I posted up a post about. Let's just leave it at that. Regulating marijuana like alcohol would create jobs. If you want to hear more, it's like the teaser. If you want to hear more and you want to hear more of my opinion, go to go to my Facebook page. You not only get to listen to me whine, you get to uh, hear me like go off on the people that at the time of the middle of the night where I can't sleep and I go off on fairly. I don't think I've done anything stupid. I've been fair. Yeah. Is Custer up in here? Custer. We got Custer up in here. Did you, you haven't seen him without a haircut? Yeah. You haven't seen Custer, Custer without the haircut? Custer got funky fresh. Custer went and got, went and got fresh. Yeah. Custer got a few digs. Custer went and got funky Woo! fresh. You almost knocked over that. That was almost a, that was almost knocked over the, uh, or at least knocked out of alignment, the camera there. You look like you belong in a lawyer's office in a good way. In a good way? In a good way. Nice. I brought you. You look, you look like you belong in a lawyer's office that... Specializes awesome. in defending superheroes. He brought gifts. This dude is so cool right now. Did he you didn't bring see? gifts for us. Yes. No, yeah. I'm not gonna accept a gift from you. Well, they're not from me. They're from the we'll f- wait. We'll figure this out. Let me get through this damn initiative. <laughs> We've been going on about this initiative for like 20 minutes now. Everybody's like, Jesus, man. We already heard. We don't even need to know more about the initiative. Um, bottom line is big, 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 big props to Safer. And Mason to Vert and everybody. Lauren, did you have something to do with collecting signatures? Big thanks to Lauren. Big thanks to uh, our homie um, Chris. Everybody that had to do with collecting signatures, man. Y'all did this. You did it right. You got it done at a time where it came down with, uh oh, we don't have enough signatures. Y'all went out and got enough that we needed, almost way more than was needed. And uh, now it's been certified for the ballot. So we're good to go. In Colorado, we will have a legalization initiative ballot or, uh, up on the ballot. Two other initiatives still up for vote. And by the way, my personal opinion, both those initiatives should be dropped and full support should be put into the marijuana equalization initiative because we get three initiatives up. Say all three of those initiatives pass, the one that gets the most vote is the one that's going to w- win number one, which is my own little weird thinking on that and two I'm sorry and I don't want to be an asshole here but the other two initiatives are not going to pass they don't have enough money behind them and it sucks that they don't and maybe they will and maybe I'm sticking my head up my ass here alright Laura if you're listening maybe I'm sticking my head up my ass here Reverend Baker maybe I'm sticking my head up my ass here and I'm sorry I'm not meaning to I'm just trying to be real with you guys and we've been real since day one on the John Radio Show with you these initiatives are not going to pass. They don't stand a chance. And I'm sorry to say that. They don't. And I wish they did. Because there are a few incredible things in them which would remove marijuana from punishment and do what needs to be done with prohibition when it ended. When the first state that ended prohibition, I think, what was it? I th- was it Mississippi? Mississippi was either the first state to end prohibition or the first sta- or the last state Either way, it doesn't matter. The first state that started in Prohibition, what they did is they went and they took out every mention of alcohol. Every mention of alcohol. So that it, you couldn't get in trouble with alcohol. There was, no, there was no mention. There was no law against it. They just took it off the books. Period. End of story. That's my opinion now of how we need to go about marijuana. But it's going to take a few states to win over legalization to get to that point. The battle is bigger than the war. Or the war is bigger than the battle. <laughs> Sorry. The war is bigger than the battle. And if... I don't even... 
<laughs> you crack me up, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> the dabber is bigger than the nail. <laughs> I'm not even that baked right now. That's the sad part. Um, anyway, I personally just don't think that these three initiatives need to be on even being pushed. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. Con let's concentrate on and and you're gonna and I know I'm gonna get shit from people being okay. So let's concentrate on an initiative that has a 15% tax and has this and is this and they'll give it up to the 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 government to, to to make it do what they did for for the co medical marijuana. That's just how the game works. From my opinion, that's what you got to do. We've got to play the game. All right. It's not like we're gonna sit here and come in and marijuana is gonna be like the only unregulated thing in the history of un of products you know cigarettes are regulated alcohol is regulated rice is regulated wheat is regulated every damn food we have in this freaking country is regulated every industry we have is regulated to think you that 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 this cannabis industry that all of a sudden was like oh my god you're gonna die if you do cannabis <laughs> two years ago still in some states Oh my God, you're going to die if you do cannabis. It's the worst drug in the world. You could never get off of it. It's worse than heroin. There's still asshats out there that say that. Dare. Everybody in dare. We got a, we got a long road to go, you know? And it's going to take a good fight. So let's get on with that road. Let's get on... <sighs> I'm losing my shiz because I'm getting frustrated. I'm getting hungry, and <laughs> I don't want to make anybody mad. By no means are they going to quit because I said, let's please stop. You know, I'm just saying my opinion here. That's all I'm saying. I don't expect you to quit. I expect you to go harder, you know? Like, there's no way I think in any terms that, I, that what I say is going to have any effect. I expect you to hear what I say, get ticked off, and go harder. Uh, that's what I would do. Yeah. I, I wouldn't quit. Well, if you look at my Facebook page this weekend, maybe you thought I was going to quit. <laughs> stress, man. It's just the stress. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> I really don't like this guy. He should not be with that guy. And that's where we're not we're not gonna get into that right now. You know who I'm talking about, right? Rob Camp Rob Campia. God dang it, I meant to hit mute. I didn't hit mute. <laughs> I think he should have stepped down, man. And they've gotten past the times that they've gotten past. I'm really digging a shithole today, ain't I? Five o'clock John Doe Radio. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've been through a lot of ride or die situations where I've had to sit here and defend people and been like, you know what? I don't care. These are my homies. So you know what? If I need to wild out and I need to say what's on my mind, which I've said before, this ain't something new. It ain't something like new that I'm bringing up and I'm like hiding about before. I've said it before. I've told the people with the MPP about it. I feel like a dick. For the past 10 minutes, now is all I feel is like a dick. Because I'm going off about all this crap. DUI bill. So sue me. No, no, don't sue me. There's nothing I've said that you can sue me with. Supposedly. There we go. All this is supposedly hearsay and a, not necessarily the opinion of anybody else but... I'm trying to find something in here that I can blame, and there's nothing I can blame. <laughs> Except for this lighter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Honestly, I don't think today's show is going too bad. I'm just kind of rambling a bit. We should have had CPM in here today. It's my fault. I totally apologize. Lauren just looks over at me and stares and laughs and looks and says, smiles. What's funny is y'all like, what's funny is like, it's like, it's like, <laughs> a, I feel like 
sometimes up in here, I feel like um, Jersey Shore. <laughs> like, like it's like a train wreck. Like sometimes I feel like sometimes people sit and watch through the window or like you or Lauren or whoever. Just like they sit here like she's eating popcorn. Sitting here like watching Jersey Shore, this train wreck. <coughs> this train wreck of a show. And just enjoying it. Like, this is, this is cool. I enjoy it. Oh, my favorite beat just came on. So anyway, uh, 170,000 signatures, uh, 14,000 during a 10-day period after falling short by 2,400. Amendment now known as Amendment 64. So if you hear of us talking about Amendment 64 in Colorado, it is the Alcohol Legalization Initiative. Or the Alcohol Equalization Legalization initiative. That's not right either. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate and informative. The John Doe Radio Show. I don't. I don't. Don't, don't listen to me today. What? It, hold on here. Criminy. Campaign to regulate marijuana like alcohol. Why don't we just call it Amendment Sixty Four from now on? The stupid numbers. Well, it's like you go to search for Amendment 64 in Colorado and it like comes up with like Amendment 64 from like 2000 and like two, you know? So it's, it gets weird. You really have to know where to go look. Mm-hmm. So go to regulatemarijuana.org if you're really looking for information on it. Or saferchoice.org. I'm sure you'll be able to get it there. Uh, my bad, Mason, for not getting you in before this. So I feel like it, I really feel like a dick today. I really feel like an ass today. Sometimes I feel like a bitch. I really feel like a dick today. Why all of a sudden do I feel so horrible? Like Mason should have been in here before now talking about this. My it's like one of my Earl. <laughs> <laughs> I crack every time he comes in with that shirt. What was the shirt you had in on uh the, the, the uh Friday? Oh, uh, to, to the dome. Yeah, to the dome, and it was just a dome dab. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thanks for cha- thanks for changing the subject. Jeez, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna hear some crap back from today. Hey, Bill. Don't give me crap you back. Lean back a little bit. <laughs> Amendment 64, spearheaded by Mason to Brian Vicente. We got to give Brian Vicente a big uh, word up. Uh, we haven't had him on here on the John Dorado Show for a long time. We can't forget about Sensible Colorado. <laughs> Sensible Colorado, a very big uh, supporter of cannabis uh, legalization and fixing things. Man, I turn on your mic, and like, is all I hear is just booming. They're straight jacking out of the room, aren't they? They're like bumping. That sounds like Laura Creho. I think that's Laura Creho. It sounds like they got someone with a drum beat behind her, too. At least I know she's not listening live to the show. <laughs> Big ups to Laura Creo then, for going down there and doing what she needed to do. I'm sitting here doing a show. You know, I got to get paid. I got to do a job. Now I even feel even more like a dick. I am a dick. Yes, you can admit it. You can admit it. She's like, I don't know. I, I don't don't put me on the spot. I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> I gotta get finished up here. Um, if approved by voters, the initiative would decriminalize possession of up to one ounce. Sorry, of marijuana by adults 21 and older nation uh, statewide. I apologize because I said two ounces there statewide. That would allow small scale cultivation for personal consumption, which I think includes six plants. Would also permit the Department of Revenue and local governments, cities and counties to design and implement regulations for controlling sales of marijuana to adults. The biggest thing I hate about this bill, and the one thing that I do not agree with, but still we can bend at the knees with, right off the bat, at least we got this out of the way, and we're not closing down shops that, like in Harmony Wellness, which I stare out my window every day here at John Doe Radio, and I look at my banner, and it's got In Harmony Wellness on it, and it just makes me sick part of the people that got closed down with you know being voted out at least right off the bat with this initiative it says that you know cities and municipalities can ban 
cannabis legal you know they can ban sales just like dry counties you know there's still dry counties you go to oklahoma you know i live in, my grandma lives in Salem springs arkansas you know you drive across the border in oklahoma that right across the border it's a dry county you can't you can't get alcohol anywhere yeah you know i'm all for home rule it sucks because unfairly they're gonna like just like they have with unfairly medical marijuana in colorado banned without any damn nothing but you know soccer moms or a soccer dad getting in there being like i'm i'm so scared i'm so scared i'm afraid of this this place next to me is gonna just blow up and explode and cannabis smoke is just gonna absolutely get my children high and as i go through my child start to have my kid and i'm pregnant i don't want to have my kid have to be high while they, i smell this mar- marijuana per- perfume coming from next door like and then as they start <laughs> like i don't want to have this next th- literally literally like that shut the fuck up yeah get up and move all right it's a free damn country all right it ain't gonna hurt to have a goddamn grow next to you in fact it's gonna do better to have that grow next to you than to have it being shipped in from mexico and people buying people are gonna people are gonna buy weed what do you not get about this people don't sell sell drugs drugs sell themselves <laughs> who's the comedian that said that like what what is that movie that is that off of fool you don't sell drugs drugs sell themselves I don't even know. It's straight up like that. Like, yeah. You think you're going to stop people from smoking cannabis? Yeah. No, you ain't going to stop people from smoking can. You ain't going to stop people from trying to alter their brain and point of view from the beginning of human t- from the beginning of Adam and Eve if that's what you believe. Altering the mindset and getting into a different where you're at has been the human drive period end of story yeah. so to deny that which is what the drug war is is an absolute failure and a joke and to not recognize it for 70 80 90 however god dang many years it's been since 19 early 1900s 1937 and marijuana became legal illegal but even then we've been dealing with crap before that to deal with that crap as long as we've been dealing with and for people not to realize that this situation has got nothing but worse and the ONDCP is harming your your children by showing them ways to smoke crack ways to use heroin ways to do whatever like and you're not pissed off about this that, that you're more of like oh this my kid will never do it <laughs> How can you not like? How can you not care that someone is inside a classroom teaching your kid how to use heroin? Yeah. Even if it's a fact of they're just teaching them how of like this is heroin, this is what it does. It'll kill you. The yeah. day that Lasan came home talking about under the sink chemicals, I knew she had entered into that dare class, and I immediately went in and took care of the issue and got her out of that class because. Well, no, no, she stayed in the class because they were just talking about, like, chemicals under the sink and stuff at that age. But when you start getting in the situation to where you're showing the kids, you start bringing in these drugs, you you unload this, like, you you have a a, a case sitting in front of you. And you know, like, the dare, dare officers, they'll come in with, like, a case? Yeah. They used to. I don't know if they do anymore, but they come in, like, a case and it's got a bunch of that paraphernalia in it and whatever. Yeah. You know? Or, like, the scared straight programs that came in with, like, the shanks or whatever. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I really want my kid coming in, looking at a, a crack pipe or a heroin piece and seeing that and knowing that it takes a Brillo pad to put crack on to smoke out of. Guess what? I would have never known how to smoke crack had it been for dare. I still, to this day, would not know how to smoke crack if it weren't for dare. I've seen some people smoke methamphetamine. I don't even know how to prepare heroin if it weren't for dare. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. Yeah. I'm not kidding you here. Why would you want your kid in there learning how to do this? Yeah, I, I could vouch that. There was my entry into the world of, uh, of yeah, narcotics and whatnot. My dad told me that my dad never shot himself up is what he said. He said that 
Maybe he might have tried every drug in the world, blah, 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 blah. Maybe he may have, may have not tried every drug. Maybe I'm putting words in my dad's mouth. But the bottom line is what I got from it is my dad never went, never went up and shot up anything. But at the same time, gave me the speech of this and this and this. That's where he comes from is from the parent. Oh, yeah. The parent, okay? And you know what? If my dad would have never told... Like, my... Dude, if I wouldn't have walked into a room and been in a band, music as much as I've been in, and seen a rig of a heroin and someone about ready to shoot up with a homeless person, $30,000 of our of our uh, musical equipment sitting in here and freaking out, I would have never, ever seen anybody within 15 feet in front of me. I've been on Colfax. I've seen some crazy shiz go down. I had my jam space was on the same space that I'm talking about right now. I walk out the door, you never know what the fuck you'd see. But I still would have never seen anybody use heroin or crack ever. But you know what? In Dare, I did. Damn. Why you got to teach people like that? And ONDCP studies, Dare studies, year after year after year, come out to show more and more, more and more and more that kids use drugs because of these dare classes that they know how to use heroin they know how to use crack they know about methamphetamine because of dare like get off your ass as a parent and i'm not trying to be a dick to you here and maybe I, and okay i feel like a dick today you should be i feel like a dick today so i'll go ahead and do it and so what if you turn me off get off your ass and tell your kids about this shiz Pull them out of this dare class. Amen. Get them out of this shit. Do not allow police officers, the, the system that has screwed us, that has put us in jail, that has harmed us, that has taken everything. I sit here and listen to people, how much money they make. There may not be people out there making money, but there's people out there doing good things. My felony, I kill myself every day I find out the things I find out. The farther we move ahead with this shiz. Stop this. Pull your kid out of dare. Do not get a felony. Do everything you can to stop this drug war. Do it. Do it. Because I tell you what, tomorrow, your kids, your grandparents, your kids, your, your grandkids, the grandparents, they will thank you. You will be in the history books. This will be an amazing thing. We will create this, this amazing feeling that I have about being able to go out and create glass. You will have this feeling of being able to, 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 to watch on the History Channel 20 years from now. That you stop this. Take your kid out of this dare class. Do not let them teach your kid this bullshit anymore. All right? Do not let them take control of this anymore. Do it. Take control as a parent. Take control of yourself as a human being. If you don't have kids, get up and stand up. Put on your Facebook that dare is bullshit. Put out these studies. And I'm sorry for yelling. And I'm sorry for everybody getting off on whatever. Do it. It's come time for you to get up off your ass and do something <laughs> about it. My voice just cracked there. I'm sick. I'm sick of hearing the people just say, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. You got Facebook. You got social media. You got everything in the world right now to get up and do it. Get up and do it. Get up and tell people to shut up if you hear somebody talking about marijuana being this horrible drug. All right? There's no more excuse. This is a war. All right? I got homies sitting in, in prison right now. I could be sitting in prison. Phil could be sitting in prison. Fuck these shiz anymore. And I said, fuck. That was close. Get up and do something about it, all right? And I need to be getting up and doing something more about it. I'm trying to create a foundation. If I can make this whole thing work out with, with uh, glass, I'll put every last cent that I have to put money into people that are in prison right now, like Chris Barkowitz, that don't deserve to be there, that need to have food, that need to have whatever taken care of for them because it's bullshit that they're in there. All right, it's bullshit that the ONCCP does what they does. It's crap that, that people get raided like they do. It shouldn't happen. It shouldn't happen. And you need to get off your ass and do something about it. I don't need Jason Lab doesn't need to deserve here every night and 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 be sleepless. And I don't know if he's sleepless or whatever. Sleepless. I shouldn't have to feel sleepless every night because I've had eight MP5s pointed at my head. All right. And I'm sorry I'm I'm wilding out here, all right? And maybe this was maybe this is me getting out what I needed to get out here for the past couple weeks or whatever. But get off your damn ass and do something about it, all right? And I'm sorry, I'm not yelling at you. And for you the you those of you that have gotten out and doing some and are doing something about it and are telling your friends and are telling your family that this is an amazing thing. By the way, this is one of the most amazing mics that you can use. I love this mic. This mic is worth like 
a million million dollars. Dude, it's the shiz. Sorry. Thanks for breaking my whole like get off on topic here. Uh, Jason Love just brought in the mic that we had used. It's uh, one of the. Uh, oh, it was. It was great. We did some recording over at the Capitol today at the uh, DUID. Not the best to take with you wherever you go. It's not, but because it's a studio mic, we're talking about right now. We're uh, Electro Voice RE200 but for the Capitol, or RE20. What, the environment we were in? Yeah. I mean, it, this is a straight studio mic. Hey, I'll get you guys something in the future you can take with you and. Uh, yeah, we do need to eventually. Yeah, but not, not to worry about that. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for letting me break my whole thing there because I didn't want anybody to feel like I was really, 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 really yelling at you there. And I'm sorry. We probably lost a couple listeners there for sitting there screaming at me or screaming at y'all. But I really, I really do believe with this. Uh, you know, it, it's going to take. I sit here and I think why I sit here and I sort of get fired up. Would you do me a huge favor? Because I just. Would you get me a glass of water? I'm so sorry. I just like yelled and now I got a drink. And the reason why I do this is because I sit here and I think of people like as I'm going to vote for Amendment 44 or, or another initiative, you know, I ask people as I'm leaving, you know, I'm like, hey, are you going to vote for like, what would you vote on this? And I think back to this one time where this guy was like, I, I knew this guy had go. I was a DJ at the bar up in Northwest Colorado. I knew this guy had sat here and drank and gotten drunk every night went out and got in his truck, drove home drunk every night. But he still was going to vote no on legalization of marijuana because he doesn't think that there needs to be something else added into the whole system. That's crap. That's crap. Okay, it's not about that. It's about writing something that is wrong and is unjust and should not happen to people. All right? Big thanks to everybody that makes the Chandra Radio Show possible. Sorry for wilding out and totally flipping out there for a second. Uh, I needed that maybe, I guess. I don't know. I'm just kind of ticked off, man. I'm, I'm ticked off at the complacency of a lot of, a lot of redonkulous. I'm ticked off at a couple organizations right now, man. I feel, I feel like we got cut off ourselves, man. JDR is JDR. We will have the JDR Army from beginning to end. I will, I will not stop JDR as long as I got a mic and an internet connection to hook up to. It'll always be here. But what I'm not willing to do is I'm not willing to... I'm not willing to get on my knees. I know Phil ain't willing to get on his knees. Heck no. I did it again. I, did I say something that actually made you maybe maybe a little funky? Was a little funky? Yeah, I came in here, all I heard is something about getting on my knees. Yeah, that's another day in a row. I said something that made Phil funky. I almost forgot, and then I said that, and I was like, ah, lighten the mood a little bit. All right, I got to go, because I seriously got to prepare for these guys' show. I did not line up the yeah, iCannabis radio show, so I got to get on to that. Uh, make sure you guys chill and hang out with us here in uh, just a few minutes, here in about a half an hour, iCannabisRadio.com. Uh, come and hang out with us. And uh, not like I said, I'm not quite sure what is going to be talked about, what kind of craziness is going to happen. I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic show. I'm sure that the DUID bill will be talked about a ton. So if you'd like to learn more about that, um, yeah, come and hang out with us. iCannabisRadio.com. Also on the uh, John Doe Radio Show Ustream, I think. Unless, I think they might have decided to do their own Ustream. I'm not quite sure the situation yet. I kind of come in now and just do the show. So I'm not quite sure the situation yet. If if we can and you guys want, you can go to the John Doe Radio Show Ustream and I'll, I'll be broadcasting it uh, on there too. So if not, make sure you go to iCannabis Radio. Alright? Um, also, I would like some feedback if you possibly can, <laughs> Robin says, "Damn it, my lighter went in the crack of the fucking couch." <laughs> I lost my dabber this morning. And I could not find it anywhere, dude. And it was like right when you were like ready to pull up. And I was like, oh, it "Feels gonna." Freak. I almost was like message you would be like, dude, I can't leave without the dabber. And Phil would have been like, okay. <coughs> and then I finally found the dabber. Anyway, um, Jeebus criminy. I'm sorry, guys. If well, I told you needed to grab a whole rig today. But I didn't know that. 
I got your message when I got into the car. I just thought it. I just thought your message sent said I'm here. Is Scott Green even here? I don't know. Holy cow, Scott Green's even here. What is? I thought he wasn't supposed to be here on Monday nights. For anybody that knows, yeah, let's just leave it at for that. Anybody that knows, tonight is Monday. Tomorrow's Glass Tuesday, the day I am most excited for. Thank you for changing the subject. So we'll uh, we'll have Tricky in here tomorrow. <coughs> I'm like days off, dude. So we'll have Tricky in tomorrow. I can't wait. I think uh, hopefully Karina will be down with uh, with uh, with with Tricky. That would be yeah. so sweet if they have my Joel Halen. I would love to speak to Karina about maybe a little bag for the Mike Fro now. Cause shoot, dude, she said she was fixing up a little something special for the Joel Halen. Well, I can imagine it'll be dope. I I've wonder. seen some of the cases online. Of I seen. Someone posted a picture of a case that she had made them, and uh, it was official, like just yeah, some yeah. baller, dope. Like she's I'm baller. the last collector, and this is my case. My case says I'm a baller. Tricky. Yeah. Uh, just Tricky on Facebook. Get with Tricky on Facebook, and uh, uh, just ask him. Go on Tricky on his Facebook. Just be like, hey, can your fiancé make me a bag? Can Karina make me a bag or something? I'll tell you what, dude. Dude, I can't wait to have that bag to be able to travel around because I, I I won't I won't bring the Joel Halen out. even with the piece that I the bag that I have now. I'll travel with the swagger piece because if there's a chance now that if I break the swagger piece, I might be able to. Re there might be some day here I might be able to repair it. <laughs> wow, that swagger piece is a perfect little traveler as it is though. Just it's perfect, the little micro okay. swagger piece. Absolutely. Yeah. By the way, everybody go check out Mad Hatter Smoke Shop, 6091 West Colfax Avenue, if you would like to pick up anything. And they can special order anything for you, too. If you'd like to get something from Swagger and they don't have it, uh, or Treehouse, even. You know, I'm a big fan of Treehouse. It's a local company, too, you know. Big ups to those guys. If they don't have it, ask them for it. Yeah. If there's a Glass Tuesday that you see a picture of something that you would like to get, uh, email me, John Doe at johndoradio.com. I'll try and find it. But really, I don't have a whole hell of a lot of time. Shop at MadHatterSmokeShop.com, right? I have blown G's in that store. Not like all at once, but over the course of time, there has definitely been G's blown in that oh, store. Oh, shit. You know what I forgot? I was supposed to find out who did the Mario pieces that I posted up. You know those Mario pieces I posted up that look like it might fall over if you dabbed it? Um, the homie Derek was like asking who did it. Normal Mario, like that's worked with the Millie chips, that's gonna be a micro. Hold on here, let me see. But I think you're talking about that whole tube thing. Uh, there was a, uh, there was a. I got uh, 99 cookies because a bitch ate one. <laughs> Not a single person liked that post. The the Cookie Monster. I got 99 cookies because a bitch ate one. Nobody, not no single person <laughs> liked that. Anyway, what what were you saying? Um, but there's another piece that has a Mario theme to it. Uh, it's pretty fresh. It has like uh, I can't think of what that thing is. The uh, what's the flower called in Mario that'll come up right and bite here. you? Is this it right here? New BTGB Mario yeah, Bros that's, rig. That's the joint. Yeah. Um, the guy on that's that BTBG or what or whatnot. That's who did that, and it's nasty. BT. So BTGB did it. Yeah, that well, should who be is the that? artist on that. I'm I'm not quite sure. Actually, I'm not familiar with that. I just seen that uh, um, because I'm friends with the Made Fellas on uh, the Good Book. All right. Well, I'm gonna post this up right now. Yeah. Oh, and them uh, them folks at the Made Gallery they had some funky fresh stuff too. Wow. Made is sick. Yeah. Made is big, big, big people with uh, not only uh, seem as. Uh, with Hitman and but they're also uh, with uh, Rolling High Vegas, right? Yeah, something. Um, Seamaz though, I I believe his girl stays out here in Colorado. If I'm not mistaken, but I know yeah they got some baller stuff out there. I gotta get going. I gotta prepare these guys' show. I don't have a single damn thing prepared. Uh, but if you guys know who I'm, I just went and reposted this on my page. <laughs> Dude, I swear to goodness, if I. If I can ever, ever, ever have the possibility of getting as good as that piece, if I can ever make anything oh, as yeah. good as that, I'm straight jacking you, Nintendo. You better believe it. <laughs> you better believe it. I'll be doing some Contra shit, dude. Oh yeah. I want homie. I want. I want. I want a straight. I'm getting way ahead of myself here. 
if anybody at Swag is listening, know that I am just gonna shut up and watch. Okay, I'm just this is I'm just kind of talking radio show here. But dude, I would straight up, I would straight up if I could make a piece with uh, what's that main character off of Contra? That dude with like the machine gun. Oh yeah, make that dude and like have it like where you were like. Ripping the machine gun like the bull was like the dude's head, and you were like blasting the machine gun. Like, I've dabbed it, you like dab his head or something. Have you seen those tubes where they have the different characters? Are actually the um, I seen they work as like the perk. Like, they have one like Sonic the Hedgehog is like a, he's like in the tube, no function way. as part of the perk. No, no way, just super. I've nasty. seen the Mario ones. There's the dude that does Mario now, all Mario, like underwater scenes, yeah, and just crazy sick shiz. Like, the like Nate have, Myers um, does a uh, space glass. Yeah, they have. Uh, oh, yeah, that's uh, the that's um, Paul Steven uh, Micro. That's Micro that does that. With, do that's, you understand? That's all Millie. Do you understand why you need to be here on Tuesdays? Yeah. Uh, well, I'm here for the filming. <laughs> no, but Phil, do you get it? Yeah. No, there's some six. Uh, like, are you willing there. to host sometimes on Tuesdays? Um, I mean, sure, but I mean, the no, thing no, is, though, no. is that is that any if. If I have any knowledge, it's gonna be trumped, and I mean, but do you, you say, got some experts and glass dude, blowers in here? You know, when them dudes are do? around, my mouth shuts up and I learn. Who I the soak. Hell am I? I sponge. <laughs> so you telling me I need to shut up more? No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I, I, I would. I would I, tell I'm me to shut say, up more. I'm just saying that you know, who, you know, like uh, I, I don't appreciate them dudes that talk about stuff that it's almost like, hey, dude, I lived that, so shut up. <laughs> And I don't want to be that dude that's like, hey, dude, just shut up. Sit down, fanboy. I'm not a fanboy, but, you know, I, glasses. I pretty totally sick. come. I totally have come across as a fanboy for swag. And I apologize. I never um, want to. Well, fan- that's a great company. I mean, I'm kind of. A- as close to a fanboy as I've ever come is being a fanboy for Star Wars. And, like, that ain't even close. I don't even know character's name on Star Wars and stuff. Yeah. So when the, when the dudes that are running swag um, made the announcement that they were coming out here to the original company that came out here, I ran out and I got one of the first tubes that came out, you know, as far as uh, what I was looking for that at piece, the time. Yeah, 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 yeah that, that piece that they got. And yeah. you can get for uh, for fifty dollars more. You can get a bent. They're making them bent now. Oh yeah, dude, it looks so sick. Did you see in the picture I put last night? Have you seen the bent versions of those that you have? Your piece. What's it called? Um, well, with that company is called the Macro. With Swagger, I don't know if they changed. The yeah, name I can't on remember. He told me yesterday, but I don't know if I could remember the name. I think they were calling it like a mini or something. Sometimes my memory. I might is. be wrong though. But yeah, you can get them bent now. Yeah. You couldn't get them bent before. Yeah. Like, I don't think they were banning them before. So now you can get anything. Yeah, swagger. Legit. Legit like, stuff. Yeah, dude. I can't believe the opportunity that was handed to me. I'd just like to take a second to say, dude, dude, dude. <laughs> wow. Like you, you, uh, you guys may have changed my entire life. Like for real. Like if I if I make this work, and I will make it work. Uh, damn. Oh, they're out there hustling. Girl Scout cookies out there. Thin mints, please. And I gave you my last fifteen bucks. <laughs> Thin mints, please. I may have to borrow. Wait, wait, wait. I st- I still owe you money, actually, dude. I oh, I forgot I owed you money. So that money needed to go to you in the first place. Hustling, Phil. All you gotta stop. Being as kind as you are, all right? Hey, man. I know you that when it comes down to it, that you're going to be like... Oh, yeah. But still, man, I'm a forgetful mofo, dude, and I've had to make some deals here recently to make sure that this show keeps going. I know where you live, dog. (laughs) And that's the truth. (laughs) That's the truth. I can see Phil. I'll be, like, looking out the window and just, just see Phil's car right there, and he'd just be... It just be, is all you see the whole night is just it's smoke coming from the window and then the the, the exhaust pipe. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, God, I just I, I just waiting for it. I should just open the door, go out there and let him beat the hell out of me. <laughs> That's what I straight been like before in the old days. You know, when you're like you calling up on people, and you just wait yeah. and you're like, fool, why don't you just come out and, and take care of business? You know, yeah. Why you gotta be? Why you gotta be? 
I gotta end the show, man. I am. I got like ten minutes to prepare their show. Have yourselves a fantastic day. Until we meet again tomorrow, we would not be here without you, the awesome listeners of the John o Radio Show. Sorry, I do apologize if I said anything out of line today. I don't think I did. I don't think I did. Phil says no. No, I do apologize for wilding out a little bit. I tried to check the microphone here and stay away from the mic and not scream into it. Um, but if I did, I, I truly, truly, truly do apologize. And also, uh, big ups to uh, Platte Valley, big ups to CPM, big ups to Rare Dankness Seeds, and uh, big ups to TH Seeds and Hemp Hoodlum, all right? Everybody that's made the John Doe Radio Show possible, uh, uh, I gush here, and I'm sorry I gush all the time. I just love you all, all right? And I'm freaking stoked about this class thing, man. Absolutely, you should be. God dang. Phil, Phil, if there's any way I can get you in there, you know I'm going to get you in there, right? That would be cool. And that's me risking saying that with Swagger listening. And they're just looking for special people. I'm pretty special. I would honestly give you my job before me. Uh, <coughs> don't say that. I know, I know, I know, I know. But, dude, that's how much, I, like, I respect your glass knowledge. <laughs> it's a John Doe Radio Show. We do it in the mile high. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow with Tricky and the good people from Mad Hatter Smoke Shop. Big thanks to Compassionate Pain Management. And big thanks to you, the listener of the John Doe Radio Show. All right? Wouldn't be here without you. Couldn't do it without you. Wouldn't give a damn without you. Tell me to get tomorrow. See ya. John Doe Radio. 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 Radio.